This tutorial is, is dedicated to post-selection inference and how we can do it in the wrong way and in the right way. So I'm going through the code. As you can see, we use these packages. So in this part of the, of the code, I just showed how, how we can download a CSV file. As you can see, it uses a relative path with respect to the RMD file that renders this screen. It says there are 100 observations in the dataset and 102 variables. Namely, uh, the first column is Y, the second column is D, the third column is V1, and so on and so forth until V100. So in this chunk of code, we plot the mean. So let's go slowly. So data set is just the data frame that we read from the CSV file. So what happens if you do... So suppose you want to just summarize the mean of Y, the first column in the data set. You do like this and you say, give me the mean of Y. The mean of Y is minus 2. You can do give me the mean of a variable D that lives within the data set of the column D. Or the mean of the column D is 0 0.04. Now you say I want actually to apply this function on all of the columns. And that's why you put summarize all and then you say this function so you have to actually put this tilde in front of the function and then instead of saying which exactly column since we are applying it to all of the columns we put a placeholder remember dot means a placeholder in this case it's a placeholder for the variable so we apply this function mean on all of the uh, columns and as you can see it collapsed all the columns to having only one row which contains the mean of the, every column So let's see. Summarize all returns back what kind of object? How would you look at the object that it that it gives back? Well, you can look at its class, right? It's a data frame. Excellent. So summarize all gives you back a data frame, which we further can, for example, mutate or uh, filter. So next we gather. What does gather do? So suppose I don't put anything here and just do gather. What happened here is that it transformed a previous data frame that was wide. It transformed into the long format and it automatically assigned the names of the columns as the key of the data, new data frame and the, the values as value. So we do gather variable mean. So here, instead of key, we want to call it instead of key here, we say variable. And instead of value, it is what? It is mean value. So we want to give it some more meaningful names. So what happens now? You see, it's exactly the same data frame, but now it has more uh, meaningful names. Next, uh, what does mutate do? I say take the character vectors of the variables and assign it to have the levels in the same order as the names of the data set. So we say we, we, names of the data set returns back this string and we say we want all of this to be ordered. So it's a nice way to order your variable your categorical variable. So instead of saying it's a character vector, you say it's a factor and then you assign what should be the order of the variable categories in that variable. So what happens next if I do like this? Voila! It's no longer a character vector, it's a factor variable. So next of the steps. Uh, it was ggplot. Yes. So I plot it on the x-axis, I want all my variables, the names of my variables, and on the y-axis, I want the values that correspond to every variable. So I put 
my y variable is mean val. See, I again pipe everything. ggplot understands that it's, it's been supplied with a data frame that, that comes as a result of whatever operations before we made with the data set. And it, it takes this object. So the next thing, it adds the layer of points that correspond to certain y and certain x. And the last thing that I do, we can do it without, just look. So, as you can see, it plotted each variable. Now you cannot see, read it. And the mean value of every variable in our data set. So, the last part of the code was rotating. We, we want to rotate the labels in here to, by 90 degrees, such that we can actually read it. So what happens next is, so what happens if I don't do this step? So the answer is like this, let me remove it. As you can see, the first variable here would be D, then V1 and so on, and Y will be at the very end. So you see, when this variable is a character vector, when you plot it, it will be organized in alphabetical order, structured alphabetically. In order to avoid this, we actually change the, the variable from string to a factor such that it will respect the order of the levels of the categorical variable that we gave it. If I run it like this, you see y is again the first one. Now, what happens if you want to uh, see the standard deviations of each variable. It's simple, you just change from uh, the function from mean to standard deviation and rerun the code. So, um, running all this, let's try to run regression with all the controls. So, I'm going to put the usual thing. So, we want to regress y on all the controls where our data is data set. The last part, so we take this linear model and we tidy it. And tidy is something that returns back a data frame itself. So tidy returns back. So you could have done summary, right? And then you would get this summary uh, result with all this information or if you really want, you can get only the data frame, which is in the middle of here. This is actually, this function comes from room package.